What's going on, my brothers and sisters and pending brothers and sisters by way of Jehovah, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit. All right, before I get into the second part of this uh, uh, the video that I'm doing about the L.A. Um, pastors, the L.A. bishops, whatever like that of L.A., look, you already know what I'm going to say, man. Please take the time to go and like, share, and subscribe to my music YouTube page and share it to your loved ones because you know we need that music that's going to be uplifting and edifying to the people to where we can come to and see truth and also be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to this youtube page so that the word of the most high god can get out even the more now before we get into the video please take the time and watch the beginning portion of the video i just did I'm gon' represent for my Lord Jesus Even when the people come up against me, still we'll preach them And I'm gon' stick with the plan that was before me Written by the brothers, the apostles, going to glory Now, we see how uh, Diedrich Haddon, how he basically changed and, and flipped him In a sense saying like, well, I, if y'all saying that I'm saying that the gospel is free uh, you're sadly mistaken man like we he flipped just that fast because his peers was basically on the other side and i show you by way of scripture how the gospel is free paul let us know that and we're not supposed to be charging no one for the gospel now for you know me like i said in in the video uh like i said before for me to travel to get to the place where I need to get to, okay, that's something different because people will raise and, and money and stuff like that to get you to get there. But to say, well, I need this amount of money before I come, no, man. Because, like, God will provide at the end of the day. And with them having the much as much money as they have, you don't need to charge the people to be honest. You probably got private jets and every daggone thing. All you need to do is just get the means to get there. Because at the end of the day, if a man don't work, a man don't eat. So you should have a job. You got income coming in from books and things like that. So why you need to charge the people to get the way they need to get to? To get the word of the Most High God. But anyway, let's continue on with this second part of the, uh, of the video by looking at what they now say. Let's get into it. I do not own any of the footage presented here. This video was merely made to pay homage to these films and not for any profit or commercial reasons. No copyright infringement intended. The footages are copyrighted and courtesy by their respective owners. This video is a non-profit film for the private use and entertainment purposes only and is not intended for sales or any sort. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. I think part of the reason that there is such an effect is because people have been, as you said, erroneously taught. Yes. But the fact is they have been erroneously taught and have not been actually taught the scriptures. Yes. They've been taught the philosophies of yes. men. They have been taught perspectives yes. that are not biblically yes. rooted and grounded. Yes. Now, it is absolute error to equate uh, gain with godliness. It is absolute error to say that a person who is wealthy is somehow more spiritual than a person who is not. That is wrong. Yes. It is error. It is erroneous. Now, this brother just sit here and said that people have I been did not own any taught of the in error. Here. And they, they've been taught the man's philosophy and their ways and everything like that. And then he said it's absolutely wrong to equate somebody's gain with them being more spiritual, whatever like that. But now my question is this. Aren't you basically that way, brother? Like, you've been taught the ways of man's philosophy. You've been taught the way of what other men think and say instead of going by what the scriptures say. And then on top of that, you basically just show, I just, wait, well, y'all see in the other video that he basically just made it seem like that he had more knowledge than, than the other brother because he's been in the scriptures or whatever like that. You basically just did that. Like, you are the very way that you say is, is in error. You are in error, brother. You've been taught the ways of, of men instead of being in the way of the Most High God. 
I just want to throw that in there right quick. Let's continue. There is truth to the fact that one who governs their lives by the principle of scripture will be increased by God. Now, hold on before you say anything, because this is one of the things that I think is problematic. My concern is this, and with my beloved, uh, 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 with my beloved uh, uh, Christians, my brothers, my sisters in Christ, when are we going to start believing God's word and, not, and stop believing the experiences yes, of men? Here's what Jesus said. Je Jesus said this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seek ye first I'm talking about. the kingdom of God Listen. and his righteousness, meaning being in right relationship yeah, yeah. and right standing with him. Mm -hmm. How do you stay in right relationship and right standing with God? By the principles of his word. God in word. So here's what Jesus said. Jesus said this. Your master, yeah. the one you say you follow. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom? Kingdom. The Greek word is basilius. The rule, the realm, the royalty of God. Seek God's rule, God's dominion. Yeah. Seek the expansion of the territory over which he rules. The realm of a sovereign is the territory over which they rule. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and, 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 and being in right standing with him. Now watch this. And all these things Please. will be added. Hold on. Give me, one, give me just one second. Okay. See, that's how these daggone people do. They say, see, you first the king. He, like, he bringing scripture and bringing the scripture to basically try to make it be as though that because he's a preacher and all that stuff, because he seek God for and whatever like that, that everything else will be added. He's trying to justify the fact of his gang of when he preach. You know what I'm saying? About him going to other places and whatever like that. He's trying to justify it. However, that scripture, your master, Jesus, that scripture that Jesus said, it wasn't talking about you gaining wealth and things like that. Yes, God will withhold nothing from you, but that's not what that scripture was talking about. Let's go and look at the scripture and see what it was talking about and keep it in context. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 27, where it says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Right there, Jesus asking, which of you taking thought, thinking, basically thinking about how you can gain, which of you can add one cubit, meaning one measure to your stature, to you? Then verse 28 says, why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. So right there, Jesus is continuing by giving and letting us know, like, we don't need to take thought of how we're going to get our clothes, how we're going to eat, how we're going to grow. <clears throat> because he said, look at the lilies of the field. He said, notice, in a sense, notice how they grow. They toil not, basically meaning they, they die not and they don't spin because they don't think, take thought of like, how am I going to get water today? How am I going to grow today? How am I? They don't think. He said, he basically said, the lilies take no thought, but it just happens. Then verse 29 says, And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So Jesus, he, he let us know, King Solomon in all of his glory, meaning all of his wisdom, he was not arrayed like one of these, meaning he was not uh, faithful, like, in a sense, like one of them. He was not, uh, in a sense, like, like how one of them, because he already had wealth and everything like that to where he, 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 it was passed down to him from his father. And he was a king. But he was not arrayed, meaning he was not in line like one of these. Then it says, wherefore, meaning why? If God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? So right there, Jesus is basically saying, if God had clothed the field, the grass, in a sense. Like he basically, basically he provides by them when he said clothe the grass, meaning he bring down rain and everything like that to where the grass can grow. He, the sun shine to where the grass can grow and things of that nature. And then he said, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, meaning Today, this is how it is. This is how it how it looks. Then it says tomorrow is cast into the oven, meaning when the day come, it will be destroyed, brought down. It says, shall he not more 
cl uh, clothe you, oh, you a load of faith. So now coming back to your faith, he said, it's talking about you being a faith and belief like God will provide. He will provide a way out of no way. I'm going to go and I'm going to spread the word because I know that when I go and spread the word to the people that want it, God will provide food for me. He will provide clothes for me. He will provide a place for me to lay my head. That's why it goes back to Jesus when, like, I'm going to put the scripture right here. I put it from the last time. What Jesus said, foxes have holes and the birds have their nests, but the son of man had no place to rest his head, meaning he don't have a house. But every way he went, he had a place to lay his head, though. <clears throat> then verse 31 says, therefore, basically now, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now, now we're getting it. We're seeing what Jesus is talking about. Because he said, now, take no thought of these things. Where we're going to eat. Where we're going to drink. <clears throat> where we're going to get clothes. He said, take no thought for it. Then verse 32 says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Then it says, for your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things. So he said, all these things do the Gentiles they seek because they, they, they take thought like, man, how are we going to eat? How are we going to drink? Because they don't, they're not in a sense of faith and following the most high God, like how we supposed to do. And then he says, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm going to finish off where it says, take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof so jesus continued and by saying seek first the kingdom of god meaning seek his wisdom his guidance to do his will you know what i'm saying seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness so we need to seek his right way his to follow him seek his righteousness and it says and all these things, these things shall be added unto you. So the things that Jesus was talking about, our, your master, like he said, the things that Jesus was talking about, it was talking about food, clothes, and uh, 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 drink, water. Those things, where to lay your head, those things will, will be added unto you. You don't have to take thought for that because it's going to come unto you because you follow God. You seek his righteousness. You seek to do his will. That's what it's saying. It's not talking about you getting glory and getting Bentleys and all that stuff. It's not talking about none of that. It's talking about the essential things, the things that we need. But let, let's continue and see what he say. God said they would be added. He didn't say you would have to work for them. He didn't say that they would be a process of, of economic exchange. He said they would be added. What people don't understand, that because they have not put the word of God to work, is that many of the things that you have, Bishop Bloomer, and that you have received, yes, Bishop Gibson, yes, and that I have received, yes. we didn't purchase these things. We didn't buy them. They were added to us. Yes. Many other things were given. And here's what people don't believe. Here, here, here's what people, well, mine was given to me. See? Right now. He is talk, he's talking about the, the, the things of the world. He's not talking about the essential things. He's talking about the things of the world. He said we don't have to work for them. He said, and then the uh, uh, other bishop, he said, I had to pay for my Bentley, though. And he said, well, I didn't have to pay for mine. Mine was given. Given by whom? Who gave it to you? The church. The church gave it to you because you didn't have to pay for it out of your own, your own name or your own account because you had it, you got it from the church's fund. The church's fund, the people of the church gave it to you. So, therefore, you're taken out of the mouths of the people. And if you go to back to Malachi chapter 3 and you look at verse 10, I'm going to put it right here. When it says, bring the tithes into the storehouse that there be meat in my house. It's not for us. It's not for the for the, for the pastors and them. It's for the people. But yeah, you got your bitlies from Your bitly from them giving it to you by way of taking, taking out of the church's fund. <clears throat> we do have to work for what we get. Matter of fact, let me show you by way of scripture. Where uh, it basically let us know that we must work. Second uh, Thessalonians 
chapter 3, we're going to start at verse 10. It says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would work not, neither should he eat. So they commanded us to say that if you work not, you should not eat. Why? Because you got to provide. You got to work for what you need, for what you want. Then it says, for we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Right there, it's saying that there are some that are among us that works not at all, but they're busybodies, meaning they start in trouble. They start in strife. Hey, man, you you, you heard about what, what happened the other day? Yeah, oh, you, you gonna take that? Ooh. That's what busybodies are. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put this, the definition right here of what busybodies is, and you'll see that it's basically those that cause trouble. And then it says, verse 12, Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. Right there, with quietness you work and eat your own bread, meaning that you must work to provide for your own self. You don't spoil to go and Hey, can you give me um? Can you give me some some money so I can get something to eat? Yeah, I'm I'm but I'm 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 gonna I'm talk to you about the word of God. But you you got to give me some you got to give me money so I can eat. No. So right there, we must work. It goes back to the Bible. God even basically let us see that from the beginning with Adam and Eve. He said to Adam that you shall work to the sweat of your brow. You shall basically I'm gonna put it right here. You shall work to the sweat of your brow and that, that you shall uh, harvest from the field that you were brought forth from. And it said that you, it will not bring much to you. So we must work to get what we want. But let, uh, let, let me let him continue. So let me say this. When God actually starts adding, see, the, the thing that people think is, well, he's using church money for that. Or your tithe is going to that. Or your offering is going to that. No, 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 no. No, I don't preach for a living. I grow faith for a living. Yeah. Preaching is my vocation. Yes, faith is my occupation. Uh, I am a grower of faith. I'm a sower of seed. I'm a planter. And see what Man, come on now, y'all. Do y'all really believe that this man is a man that of faith? He said, uh, <clears throat> preaching is not my occupation. He said, faith is my, whatever he said. Do y'all really believe that man? Because let's be honest. If it was that, he wouldn't charge people to go and preach. Because faith is his occupation. He plants seeds. So he should be planting the seed of faith. He should be planting the seed of believing in Christ Jesus. If that's what he really do. But yet you see that he make money from the church. And when he said it don't come from the tithes and the comfort. Where did it come from then? When you go and preach to the people. When you go and, and you charge to go preach. Where did it come from? It's coming from their tithes and their offering. To bring you in. Yes, it does come from the tithes and offering. So stop sitting here telling that dog gonna lie. Because if that would be the case, you wouldn't charge to go and preach nowhere. You wouldn't do that. But yet you do that because you know you're gonna make money. That ain't faith. Faith is going. If they if they're like, man, we'll pay you to and come and, and preach the word. No, you ain't gotta pay me nothing. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get my own ticket and everything. I'm gonna come, and the Lord will provide. They will just give it to you. God will provide to you in that manner if you really had the faith, but you don't do that. Let's continue, though. People don't understand is this is, preaching is not my job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life's not. That, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm called to do. So what happens is, yes, do we earn money? Yeah, the workman is worthy of his hire. Then, then, what, is, then what is your job? But the error is, my, 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 I have a life. I, I say it all the time, I don't have a job. Right. I have a life. Have a life. Yeah. Yeah. Can I respond? Now, can I, now I have a vocation. Bishop Jones. Can, Bishop Jones. I, can I respond? Yeah. First of all, whenever we go to scriptures, we, we, we must stay within the context of the text. When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added, check the context. It was talking about food, mm -hmm. food and raiment. Yeah, the whole need of man. Yeah. What you have need of. It was talking yeah. about what you have need, need, of. need of. That's right. Now, the truth is, brothers, and we need to just tell the truth. There is nobody, maybe Joel Osteen's father was rich enough to give him a start, and he had Buku Bank, so he could start with Buku Bank. There is none of us who has started in ministry at 19, 20, 25, like I did, who did not need contributions from the saints to make our lives work. When I came along in Texas, they said to me, Pastor, 
please wear the best clothes you can to the meeting. Please wear the best car. Drive something nice. See, this is the problem that I have right there when it comes down to the church. Because if he's telling the truth, where they, you go to the church and, and you start to preach at this church, and they say, you know, pa Pastor Jones, please wear the best clothes. Please drive the best car. Like, I, I, I fail to believe that the church are really asking you to wear the best clothes and to drive the best car. And if they are doing that, what are you, like what are you what what's what is it for? <laughs> is is it to show God or is it to show you? Is it to show the the righteousness and the will of the most high God or is it to show that your church has the best cars and, and the best people there? It's for your self gain, your self righteousness, not instead of instead of the, the righteousness of the most high God. Because let's be honest, we can go back to scripture. Matter of fact, let's look at Luke chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. So right there is letting us know that Jesus Christ had appointed 70 other disciples and sent them from before his face, meaning sent them before him to every city and every place where he gonna go come later. And then it says, therefore, which meaning now said he unto them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So right there is let us know that the, har the, the, the harvest is plentiful, is, is great, but the laborers are few. Meaning the workers, the servants of the Lord is few. And then he said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers. So the harvest, uh, the, lab, the, the Lord of the harvest is Jesus Christ. Pray ye therefore, well, the most high God is the Lord of the harvest. And he said, pray ye therefore that he would send forth laborers. Pray that more would come to spread the word. Then it says, go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor scrip, nor shoes. And salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever, meaning who, whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. So right now, carry no money, shoes, or purse. So why do you need to have the best clothes? The best, uh, uh, uh cars and whatever like that when he sent them forth and said don't take nothing with you no no shoes no purse no money come on man <laughs> let's be for real here now i must say he did show bishop Mc, whatever mcclendon Mc, 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 whatever his name is he did show him that you need to stick within the context of what the scriptures say it ain't talking about adding bitleys and all that stuff it's just talking about the necessities of man he did hit the nail on the head on that one. But let's continue. I'm not suggesting that you heard me say that. Don't go that. No, no, not okay, at all. Not, right. not at all. Yeah, okay. Not at all. I, I, know, I know you're inside. We heard you say these things were added. Yes. I am telling you. And we're going to stay there. I'm yeah. telling you that none of us, I hear people talking now from ministerial perspectives of not needing donations right, right, to right. operate their lifestyles. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the truth of that is mm -hmm. that any and every one of us who began as young pastors used, managed, administrated the donations of others. Now, we're popular enough now to write books and the books can take care of all of our needs. Mm -hmm. But somebody's money helped us to be on TV Absolutely. to make us popular enough now not to need donations. I put it in a short way. That's it, is the no, it is the donations that we have received that have put us in a place where now we don't need donations. And I don't think we should ever insult the people of God who spent their money supporting us and ever look back and treat them as if whatever they gave us was of no significance because it helped us to get to a place where we can stand and not need their donations. Mm -hmm. And I will say this in my conclusion. Jesus said to the woman who brought the two mites that she gave more than anybody else, but he didn't give it back to her. That's good, yeah. And when you understand that, you understand we give spiritual things for you to give carnal things. Yes. It's not that significant. Jesus but what we have, have yeah. what most of us have, is what we chose to buy. Yes, yes. We didn't have to have it. We chose to buy it. Now, I'm going to say right here, some of what that man was saying was real and true. But now, as far as basically your stature and all that stuff like that, man, like, Jesus basically warned us of those type of people. 
And then even I'm, I'm gonna read the scripture before, and then I'm gonna continue on to the two mics because he tried to use that, saying that, that in a sense that they, by them giving unto them, that they um gave more than anybody else. But let's let's go ahead and jump into it, man. We're gonna look at Mark chapter 22, and we're gonna start at verse 38. And Jesus, this is Jesus' word, and he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace. So right there, the Lord Jesus Christ, our master and our savior, he said, beware of them that love to go in long clothes. It's talking about basically how the scribes in them, they used to dress and wear the best clothing in a sense. They was, they was look, they looked the best. He said, beware of them that love to go in long clothing. And then he said, and love salutations in the marketplace. Meaning they love the praise of the people. Meaning, oh, there's, there's Mr. McClendon. Oh, that type of thing. They love that, that vain, that vanity. They love that in the marketplace. And then he said, and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at the feast. So basically he's saying that they love to be in high stature, in high status. That's what they love. And then it says, which devour widows' houses. And for a repentance, make long prayers. These shall receive great damnation. So Jesus is letting us know that the people that we see today, even, it's even today, where you see them in high status, and high stature, where they love to be reverenced by others. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a video also to let it show us we shouldn't even be calling no man on this earth reverend. Why? Because that's for Jesus Christ. But anyway, I'm going to continue. He said that great damnation shall come to them because of them putting on a show in a sense. Instead of being real and true to the most high God in service. And then when he goes back to the two mics, it says in verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld, meaning he saw how the people cast money into the treasury. And how many that were rich cast in much. So Jesus was watching and seeing that they cast money into the treasury. And that the people that are rich, they cast a lot. They put a lot of money in. Just like we do in the churches today. Where you will see they pass around the the, uh, the, uh, the donation plate. The, the, the tithes and offering plate. And you'll see some people put in a whole lot of money. And you'll see some people put in a little bit. And then it says, And there came a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites which make a farthing. So right there is let us know that she casted in two mites, which makes a farthing, meaning that um, I'm going to put the definition of farthing and right, th things right here, because I'm not going to look it up. I'm just going off of what I hear. A farthing basically means makes a meal. It makes, you know, say enough for the, her to be able to eat for the day, makes enough for a meal. And then it says, and he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily, which means truly, I say unto you that this poor woman has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. So Jesus could finish off by telling the brothers that she cast in the most because she wanted the word she wanted truth she wanted healing she wanted from the father she wanted to receive uh righteousness and grace and love from the father and it says that she can cast in more because the ones that cast in a lot they 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 rich they cast in from their abundance what from they are what they gain what they already have but she cast in all that she had so she cast in the most and and then if you look at um uh, Luke chapter 21, and you'll see it's basically talking about the same thing, but you'll see that the reason why she did it was because it comes from because she wanted offering from God. I, I'm not gonna read, you know, the um, I'm gonna start off at verse four, and it says, For all day, matter of fact, I'm gonna put the whole thing here so you can see it's basically the same, but. I'm going to start off at verse 4. It says, For all these have of their abundance cast into the offerings of God, but she of her penury 
have cast in all the living that she had. And as some spake of the temple, how it was adorned with goodly stones and gifts, he said. So it was an offering to God. She she cast in the offering to God because she tried out of faith. That's what the two might story meant. It ain't talking about you giving it to your pastors and all them. It's an offering to God. But anyway, I'm in this by saying, man, the gospel of the most high God, which is the son, his son, Jesus Christ, salvation. The gospel is free unto all men. These pastors, these bishops, they're so caught up into tradition. They're so caught up into how they was taught from the school and whatever to where they basically go off a of man's teaching instead of going off of what the scripture says. Because I'm sticking with what the scriptures say. They just go on and, and, and use the scriptures to add to what the, may justify their living and their standards. But he did tell the truth by saying that the cars and all that stuff that they get, they get it because of what because they want it. It's not because God blessed them. So anyway, I'm going to end this by saying, grace, peace, and mercy be unto you all. I love y'all. Peace.